Lemkin Solitaire and Equalizer Seeders and Planters offer disruptive innovation like vertical banding, dry and or liquid onboard fertilizer, and great prices. Go to lemkindemo.com for more information and to request a demo. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture. We are joined by Scott Shearer, professor and chair at The Ohio State University, expert in uh, all things soil compaction when it comes to uh, what's happening in our fields. And Scott, we've of course seen some developments in the tire technology front over the last number of years. What kind of impact or correlation are you seeing when it comes to measuring compaction in the field? Yeah, There's uh, a couple big things that, that I would key in on here. And we'll talk about two different tire technologies. Um, we go back in you know 1960s and 70s. We had a lot of bias ply tires, and because tractors didn't go too fast, and we weren't quite as up on what sidewall deflection meant in terms of value. Um, then we went to radial tires, and now VF and IF tires. The VF and IF really refer to how much flexure we can get out of the sidewalls. When we let the air out of the tires, and we get that sidewall flexure the tire squats and spreads out over the soil surface area, okay? Really, it, it, it results in a couple different benefits. We've reduced our contact pressures in some cases, which is good for surface compaction, if you will. The other thing that we're seeing is probably better tractive efficiency, okay? And that really goes to this issue of how much tire slip or wheel slip we're getting, as well as, if you will, um, the uh, fuel use rates um, for that technology. Now, having said that, um, there's a lot of farm, just because you bought an, a VF or an IF tire doesn't mean you're going to see value. The way you see value is you reduce the air pressures, but you got to be careful because you can't void the warranty on the tire. The manufacturer won't like that and they won't stand behind um, any kind of uh, uh, loss uh, correction or whatever. Um, and at higher speeds, especially when you're traveling on roads, you got to be careful because you don't have quite as much latitude with tire pressures in terms of reducing them. Having said that, if you're not reducing the tire pressure in a VF or IF tire and allowing it to squat in the field, um, the bottom line is you're not going to get that benefit from that tire technology. Okay. Um, the other thing is we have to think about what kind of tires um, or where the tires might be used and what kind of pressures. And so again, if we're able to reduce those tire pressures without voiding the manufacturer's warranty, there's a lot of value in that. Uh, but we also have to kind of be careful because of the speeds we're operating at depending upon what those axle or wheel loads are. Another tire technology that's come along is LSWs. Um, it really refers to the height of the sidewall. Um, the wheels themselves get a little bit bigger in diameter. These tires get a lot wider. They could be 1,100 millimeters, um, at least some of the common ones. That tire technology um, has a lot of value in, in terms of big contact area, again, addressing the issue of fuel consumption and, uh, and uh, I'm going to say um, productivity. But the other thing about that LSW is it becomes a little bit more stable on public thoroughfares. And we see these equipment trains sometimes where we have an air cart or a product cart and then we're pulling an air seeder or tillage tool behind that and pretty soon you got some that's 100, 110 foot long or whatever. And uh, the, the dynamics of that situation, especially potentially with some of these other tire, tire technologies when you've let the air out of them, can, can pose some challenges for farmers when they're operating on public thoroughfares. And so the LSWs, they have their place. Um, with all these tire technologies, there's an add-on cost. And again, I encourage the farmers to think about what that cost differential is and what that benefit is they're going to get from that technology. I always thought it was a rule of thumb, uh, pounds per square inch, in your tire equaled pounds per square inch of uh, pressure on, on the ground. Yeah. That, that doesn't hold true anymore? Um, that used to be the, the kind of, I'm going to say, the, the rule of thumb. Whatever air pressure I saw on my tire when I looked at the contact between the tire that was squatted and the surface area in the soil, I'd see about the same average pressure. We're not seeing that hold when we get down to some of these lower pressures today, though. So you gotta you got to be kind of careful using that as a, a necessary metric. I will tell you, though, there's a lot of these VF and IF tires, depending upon how the tractor's ballasted, we can be running those down around 10 or 12 PSI and not voiding manufacturer war uh, manufacturer's warranty. Obviously, you got to look at the tire tables to do that, but uh, when, the, when the farmers aren't letting that air out of that tire, they're not taking advantage of that technology they purchased. you got to be careful, too, because when a lot of ag tires fail, they fail because of the sidewalls, okay? And that's when we go back to the bias plies. That was one of the ways you determine whether or not you had to replace the tire was, whether or not the sidewall failed. 
these new tire construction techniques allow those sidewalls to squat a lot more, more and that tire to kind of, uh, um, I'm going to say, bulge out. And, you know, everybody thinks, well, the air pressure is too low. Well, you need to get an air pressure gauge out and check the tire. That's the best way to, to make that assessment. Finally, Scott, when we're talking technology, what are we seeing in terms of developments or, or n new things, new trends on the central tire inflation systems? Yeah, those are going to become increasingly important, and that is when we're in the field, we get by with lower tire pressures. We get on the road and we have the same loads. The problem is at higher speeds, and again, looking at those tire tables, um, we'll have to actually air up the tires. And so these central tire inflation systems, I think, are going to become pretty important for a lot of people that are roading equipment between field activities. In Europe, it's a little bit different because they tend to haul a lot of their agricultural commodities to market using their tractors. And so it really kind of depends upon the situation the farmer's in as to how important that is to be able to change those air pressures when you go from infield applications to on highway. I also think at some point in the future, we're going to see that tractor adjust those tire pressures automatically in the field. So think about that uh, becoming artificial intelligence and some of the technologies that are coming along. And again, it's, it's about productivity and it's about fuel use. Um, are we seeing manufacturers integrate this into their actual initial build of the machine versus an add-on after? Yeah, there, there's a couple different systems out there, and they're, they're, they all um, do the same thing. They just have different ways of accomplishment. Of course, there's a cost associated with that. But we're starting to see some of the component manufacturers begin to drill the axles, okay? And then the air gets to the tire through the axle. Uh, a lot of these other systems, you'll have to put some kind of slip ring on the outside, and there'll have to be some kind of air hose run to the wheel on the outside to where that slip ring is. And so both technologies work. Don't misunderstand me, but the nice thing about the when they come in the axles, they'll be a little bit more integrated into the overall tractor. So, Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity.